Hi, friends. So today we are going to learn how to um, open up a image that we have drawn and then import it and convert it over to outline so that we can modify it from there. So what we're going to do is when you open up um, Illustrator, I want you to first go to open. I don't want you to go to new file for today. Go open. Then you're going to open up your downloaded um, project that you have. So I uh, named mine name, so I knew what I was opening. So I'm just going to take a second here. All right, so now I have it open, and um, you can see that I have it on a specific layer. You can see that it's also a little bit like gray and not as white as I want it. So the first thing that um, I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it, make sure I have this tool. So make sure I have the selection tool and then click on it. From here, these options on the top should show up. If they are not, let me know and I can help you get those options up there. We want to go to image trace and click the little button next to it. Don't just click on the big button because it'll default to whatever happened beforehand and that may not be what you need. So go to the arrow and then go down to black and white logo. So we wanna turn this into just plain black and white, no other colors, no nothing like that. So I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna ask me if I wanna proceed and I'm gonna say, yes, I would like to. So I'm gonna take a second and now it's gotten rid of everything and now it's just a really nice solid black and white logo. You can see that some of my image is a little bit, has some spots that are a little spotty. We can totally fix those later on if you like or maybe you don't even care. Uh, so from here, um, we want to click expand. So this should show up now. So what that does is it makes it so that we can edit it later on. And it takes it and turns it in from an image and it turns it into vectors. So we're going to press expand. And now you can see that it turned blue. So even my letters have this blue outline around it. If I were to go to my direct selection tool, so this is my selection tool where it selects big things, your direct selection tool selects small things. If I go here, you can see that it pops up with a ton of different points. And these points are edit editable. These points are, you can modify and do whatever you need. So before we get into that, what I would like to do is we have this all selected. I want you to go to object. Oh, why isn't it letting me ungroup? Hold on. Let's select it. Maybe we have to go to the direct selection tool. I mean the selection tool. Nope. I want to ungroup this. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to figure out so let's right click. Here we go. I don't know why, why that is not working. I don't know. So anyway, go to right click and click ungroup. So what this does is now turns your letters into their own separate sort of entity. Instead of having them all be together where before they were all one big group. And if we moved something, we moved them all. So now I can move just one thing. From here, you can come in here and modify your letters. So I can come up and make this really big and long if I wanted to. I can come to the corner and get that little um, arced arrow and I can rotate it and make this like fit on this side. So your job now is to take your letters and, um, what's going on? Oh, look at that. I'm gonna delete that, I don't need that. Um, here we go, this will be a little bit better. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna modify it. So you can see in my J, cause I have things on the inside, I can select them individually. So if I wanted to, I could take, that must be leftover. I think that was leftover. Okay, so I was gonna say, that was weird that I can do that. But is that another leftover? I'm having these like, oh, you know what? They're the inside parts. I know what's happening here. So inside, it like made these inside parts. So look at, that's like the inside of the J. If you want to delete those, you can. Like I'm sure there's an inside of the N and things like that. You don't necessarily have to. It's not um, required or anything like that. But you may want to later on. It's completely up to you. So I just got rid of all my inside parts. Now if I click on it, then it just selects the whole J. So again, from here, if I just use my selection tool, I can move it all around. Um, it might be beneficial to take your objects or your letters and move them off of the page. And what that will do is it will open it up 
Um, and then you can select here. See all my extra parts? These were all the things that were inside. I can just press select them and delete them. I'm just pressing the delete button as well when I delete. I'm not pressing anything special. Um, so when we move our things off to the side, what it does is it just opens up our canvas so that we're able to move things around or do what we want with them. So you're going to take your letters, and I'm just going to quickly do this because I don't want to take up too much of your time, and arrange them on your page however you want. Remember, we're trying to make this more of an abstract thing so that um, our letters are sort of there, but not there. They're just sort of creating lines from here on out. So if I'm just taking this and moving this, you know. Okay, so this is perfect. I have my end and I'm really stretching it, right? And this side reaches the end and this side reaches up here. And by the way, don't worry about anything that's off the page. It's not that big of a deal. But I want this end here to reach down here. But if I do that, if I stretch this all the way down, then I am missing this whole chunk here. And I don't really want that. So I'm going to bring that back up to line it up to where I want it which is a little bit higher. And then we are gonna work on getting this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna zoom in. I'm gonna take my um, eye magnifying glass and I'm gonna zoom in. All right, just makes it easier. So use that, don't always have to have things so small. And then what I'm gonna do is now is where I wanna have my direct selection tool. If I click on this, you'll see all these different points come up. If I click on a specific point, like I'm just going to use this one because it's in the middle. If I click on this specific point, you can see all my other points opened up and this point is solid blue. If I take this and move it, I can change the shape of my letter and change it, which that is very cool and interesting if that's something you want to do. I don't want it, so I'm going to hit Control D. So it's going to be like that. And maybe I do later on. I don't know. But I want to move this end here down. I'm going to take this point and I'm going to stretch it. Now, if I want it thicker, I'm going to take this other point and I'm going to stretch it. Oh, that was just a handle. Hold on. This point. There we go. So, and that stretches it out. That was too far. So then that stretches it for me. And now, whoop, there we go. Now it's going to the edge. So that is a really great way to come in here and modify things. So if I wanted my the E part, this part, a little bit longer, I could just even select this. Oop, where'd it go? All right, I can come in here and select this, and it can come out. I can change the shape of it, the direction of it all that good stuff. So that's a really great tool to use. All right, I'm just going to pop these in because I want to be done talking so that you guys can create here. And you can definitely have your letters like overlap if you want. Like I'm sort of liking this A sort of on top of everything. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Maybe right there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Now what your job is, is your job is to put color on this. So I want you to think about what is your personality? What, um, how can you portray yourself through this? So already we have our letters, right? But now we need to add some pizzazz to it. First thing though, is I need to make a new layer. So this layer right here is all of my letters. I'm actually going to layer it. I mean, not layer it, name it. Sorry, I was reading the word. So I just double clicked on there and I'm going to write letter, right? Because all my letters are on there. If I want a new layer, I'm going to go down to this little plus sign here and click on it. And that's a new layer. I want this to be behind all my letters. I want my letters to stay on top. So I'm going to take it and click on it and drag it underneath. So this little blue line is beneath the letter. I'm going to double click this so I can label this and I'm going to write background. So I want to only work on my background. Sometimes when you start working on other layers, other things want to move and we don't want them to move. I would suggest locking your letter layer. And it's very simple. You just click here and it locks it. So now 
I can't move anything on here. No matter what tool I use, I can't even use a paintbrush on here or the pencil on here because it's locked. So that's a really good tool to use when you're having this. All right, let's go back to our background. I want you to add... Oh, I don't have a brush selected. Okay, so this happened to me before. So sometimes you have your brush and you come over here and your layer is not locked and you're like, what the heck? Why can't I do anything? So what that means is you don't have a brush selected. I need to go to my brushes palette. And if you just have basic, that means you don't have anything selected. So I'm going to go up here and go to the three little lines, click on it go down to open brush library, and I am going to pick artistic and I'm gonna pick calligraphic. So when I do that, like look at all of these brushes. And if you go back here, look at all these brushes. You can do all these different kinds of brushes in here while, by looking at them. I'm just gonna pick a really simple one. I'm just gonna pick this circle one right here. Do you see how now that popped up and now my brush can work? Okay, so that's what we need to do in order to do that. So I'm going to actually, I want to fill our bigger spaces in. I'm going to use the shape tool. I think I want to use, I want to use the polygon tool. So the polygon tool is just something that's going to make a polygon for you. The cool thing is, is you can either just stay with that shape, or if you click, you get to decide how many sides you want. So if I wanted to do a triangle, I can type in three, and look at, I got a triangle for me, all right? I would like to change the color of this. I'm gonna go to my colors palette here. And ooh, this is another good learning point. Sometimes it shows and you don't have any colors and it's just grayscale. I don't want that, I like color. So what I need to do is I need to go up to the three lines, go up here and select CMYK. After that, I can pick all the colors that I want. So let's talk about these two little guys here. This big block of color is my fill. So whatever I make, it's going to fill in it in with color. And that's the color I'm choosing. This black part here is my outline or my stroke. So you can see this automatically went to grayscale. So we're going to turn it back over. Um, and this is where I get to, to change my stroke color. So let's say I want like a a purple. And you can always modify your purples using your tools here. I don't know if I like it that. There we go. I like it more of a little bit lighter there. I like that. So you can just mess around with it. I want my stroke to be a little bit thicker than just one point. So it looks like three looks good. All right. So from here, I can take this and make it bigger and put it on this page here. There we go. I didn't want it to line up too much with that. I want to make another triangle. So I'm just going to do control C, control V, make another triangle. And I am going to change the inside color. Oh, wait, here. Sorry, I couldn't, like, my brain wasn't finding it for a second. I want to change it to a yellow. Oh, see, look at, I had my, um, stroke selected last time. So it automatically defaults to that. So I'm going to press control Z to get it back. Click on my blue and then come in here and grab a yellow. Ooh, I don't like that yellow. There we go. That's better. All right. And from there, I'm just going to move it. And I want this yellow to be behind this green. So I need to right click, say arrange, send to back. And now I've got that. All right. I want to make one more and I want this to be a, I don't know what I want. Do I want pink or orange? Um, maybe like a, let's do that. Okay, so I want to put this behind as well. So I'm going to right click, arrange, send to back. All right, let's say I really like these three, three things and I want them really grouped together. I can click and drag, select them all, right click and group them. So from here, I can do control C, control V. And now I've got this group of triangles again that I can modify and change and put on my page. I'm going to have it off the page a little bit. 
So I'm going to have it like that. So you can take things and um, move them around, modify, fill up. Okay, one last thing. One last thing I want to show you. I want to show you how to get a gradient on a piece. And maybe you already know this, but I just want to show you. So I'm going to get a, yeah, I want the ellipse tool. If I want a perfect ellipse, which is a circle, I press shift before I drag it. And that's going to give me a perfect circle. Perfect circle. If I let go of shift, then I can make whatever kind of shape I want. But if I click shift, it'll automatically go to that color that I want. So I'm going to pick a pink color and I'm just going to keep my outline. All right. So if you like your colors like this, totally cool, but you can also change the transparency of it. So I could come in here and make it like, I usually stick around the 60 to 75, but if I come in here and move this, you can see how now it overlaps and we can see through it a little bit more. So that's an option for you. All right, I'm gonna do some, I'm going to change this. So I just made another one because I wanna show you gradient wise. So I'm gonna change it back to 100. I'm gonna go to gradient here. Gradient will always, always, always default to black and white, it just does. So from here, I can take my, this is selected. So my object is selected, right? But I have to make sure, like, look at what I just did. I just made the outline gradient, which I don't want. I want to make the inside of this a gradient. So I have to click over it. So just double check on those things. Again, if, um, if it like does something you don't want, just control Z and it's okay. So from here I can edit it. Do I want a linear gradient, which is up and down and I can change, um, I can change that. Do I want a radial gradient, which means that it goes in to out. Um, and then this gradient is a free form gradient, which, um, which is where you can make different points to create different gradient points that you can do. Um, I am not going to do that right now. I want a radial gradient. So sometimes this guy will pop up, which is awesome. So what this does is this really modifies your gradient. So how big it is, how small it is, you can move it in so it's smaller. Um, you can move uh, the direction, like the direction of it. You can move in here how much white or black you may have. So this is a really great tool. If this tool doesn't pop up, just click here and it'll pop up. Okay, let's change the color of this gradient. I want to change the color. You have black here and you have white. I'm going to double click the black, go to my swatches. Again, it defaults to black and white. So I have to come back and click CMYK and I can change this black to green. And I can go and click on the white. And again, it defaults and I can change it to blue if I want to. If I wanted to add another color in, all I have to do is click somewhere here in the middle double click there, red or purple. So you can see how all of these points, and then I can come in here and modify how big they are in between them. So it's a really cool way to add gradients, to add a little pizzazz and um, a little fun. So your job is going to be to opening up um, your uh, image, modifying it, stretching it out, shrinking it, filling the page. We want to fill the page and then you're going to add whatever kind of color shapes you want behind it. And that is your project. Um, make sure these this image like is totally representative of you. Um, if you need help, please let me know. But that is what we were doing.